Welcome to my channel. My name is Cassandra and today's practice is a 90 minute yin yoga class. You guys have been asking for some longer yin yoga practices for a long time now. Sorry it's taken me so long. It's just it takes obviously longer to film and edit these longer practices but I'm finally getting around to it. This is a full body yin yoga practice so we're going to focus on the shoulders, the low back, the hips and the hamstrings. Really full body stretch definitely have lots of props with you so two blocks for sure if you also happen to own a bolster like a big big cushion like this also grab it if you don't have one at home that's no problem you'll be able to use your blocks instead so let's begin in a comfortable seated pose we're going to start just with a grounding meditation so letting the hands rest on the tops of the knees sitting up nice and tall dropping the shoulders away from the ears and letting the eyes close and you might need to rock a little bit back and forth or side to side until you can find that true center. And back of the neck staying long. Softening the facial muscles. And connecting to your breath. So we're not going to force the breath or do any specific breathing exercise. I want you to instead let your breath be natural. As long as you keep it going smooth and steady and that you're not holding the breath, that's perfectly fine. Settling the mind. If you notice yourself becoming distracted, just bring your thoughts back to the present moment. Focus on the breath. gently opening the eyes let's move into our first yin yoga pose coming into our straddle fold so you can open up the legs nice and wide and we're gonna fold directly into the center so this is one of those poses where if you have a bolster it can come in really handy you don't need one you can always just use some blocks so tipping forward from the pelvis just soften yourself down so again if you don't own a bolster, you can just use some blocks and place them underneath the forehead or underneath the chest, or you can also just stay up a little bit higher here. And take a moment to get yourself comfortable in this pose. A little bit of a bend in the knees so you're not hyperextending. And don't push too far here. We're not trying to make it super intense. 
We just want to feel a little bit of resistance, a little bit of a stretch. And as you breathe and hold this pose longer and longer, you'll notice that with every minute that passes, you're able to fold a little more and the legs and the hips open up. In this 90 minute practice, we are going to hold these poses for at least five minutes each. It might end up being a little bit longer for some of them. So definitely a more intense practice. Notice that the longer you're holding the pose, the easier it is to fold. Just always try to get gravity to do the work for you. This is a meditative practice, so I really won't be talking too much throughout. It's mostly a silent practice.
So because we've been in this pose for quite a few minutes already, we need to move out of it really slowly. Just press into your hands and lift back up, unrolling using arm strength to lift the chest until the shoulders align back up in line with the hips. And you might want to use your hands to help the knees bend once more. And from here, we'll make our way into a wide like a child's pose so you can move bolster out of the way if you had one. So child's pose, the big toes are together, the knees are as wide as you would like them to be. Rest your hips towards your heels and walk the hands forward to melt the heart down to the floor. If you don't quite make it all the way, you can always put a block underneath you. So if the knees are too wide here, it'll feel really uncomfortable on your low back. If it feels like pain or compression, just bring your knees a little bit closer towards one another and keep drawing the shoulders away from the ears. Notice if any part of your body is tensing up or trying to work. Relax the chest and the upper back. Let yourself melt into the pose.
and let's start to come up. So you don't need to come up all the way. We're actually just going to slide forward onto our bellies. So you can bring the knees a little closer towards one another, setting ourselves up for sphinx pose. So the legs extend back behind you. The forearms are flat to the mat. And you want your elbows and your hands to be about shoulder width distance apart or so, lifting the chest up, pulling the shoulders back, taking a little back bend here. So if this feels a little bit too intense, you can always bring your elbows further out in front of you and lessen the intensity. Otherwise, you can always walk the hands a little bit closer towards you to lift the chest even more. So there is a bit of a compression here in the low back. Just make sure that it's not causing you any kind of pain. Let your chest come back down to the floor. I'm gonna take a laying chest opener, really great way to stretch into the pectorals and into the shoulder. So I'm actually gonna start on the left side first. It'll be easier for you to see me this way. So from here, you want to reach your left arm out to the side and have your elbow at about the same height as your shoulder with the elbow bent at a 90 degree angle and the palm is flat to the floor. From here, you're gonna roll onto your left hip, left shoulder, and left ear. And your right hand can either stay pressing down into the floor, or you can always bring your right hand to rest on your low back. I like to keep the knees bent one on top of the other. So you should feel a pretty intense stretch and opening into your left shoulder. You might need to readjust a little bit the positioning of your arm until you get that nice intensity 
but not too much that it's painful. This is a really great pose to do if you're nursing or if you just spend a lot of time at your desk. Relax your jaw and your neck. Sending your breath deep into that left shoulder, wherever you feel this the most. Let's straighten the legs, roll onto your belly, and we'll set ourselves up for the same pose on the other side. So this time your right arm goes out, and you're bending the elbow at a 90 degree angle. Keep your palm flat to the floor, and you're going to roll onto your right ear, right shoulder, and right hip using the left hand to press into the floor or bringing the left hand to the low back. Whatever you did on the first side, repeat it here.
Keep drawing the left shoulder down and away from the ear. And let's start to come out, straighten the legs, roll onto your belly, and we're gonna make our way into a tabletop pose on hands and knees. So from here, let's make our way into lizard pose, or what is a low lunge usually. So stepping the right foot forward to the top of the mat, I'm gonna grab a hold of my blocks here. This is completely optional. I like to leave my hands on blocks, but of course you can always just put your hands straight down to the ground. So the palms are on either side of that front right foot. You can also pad your left knee just because we are here for a few minutes. So you can either put a blanket or a towel underneath or you can double up your mat. I'm pretty comfortable this way, so I'm just going to leave it as it is. And if your wrists start to feel really uncomfortable or sensitive here, you can always switch and make some fists and rest on the knuckles instead. So just relax the chest, let the hips melt down, really deep opening into the hip flexors.
So from this lizard pose, before we go into the other side, we're actually going to make our way to swan or pigeon pose. So moving the props just to the side, you can toe heel your right foot over to the left. So you want to have your right knee behind the right wrist. And your heel might end up being a little bit closer to the pubic bone, or you might be able to bring it the toe is a little closer to your left leg, or sorry, your left hand, just depends how open the hips are. And if your hips are hovering off the ground here, you can always prop yourself up by putting a block underneath you, or you can use your bolster. Otherwise, if the hip comes down to the ground, we're just gonna fold into it. And again, you can place a block or two under the chest or under the forehead. So we want to make sure we're not leaning on one side more than the other. We're keeping the weight evenly distributed.
and let's come out of the pose, go slowly. We've been here for a while and we're just gonna make our way back to our tabletop pose on hands and knees and do any little movements here that feel good just to get the blood flowing again through that right hip and down the right leg. Notice the difference from one side to the other. And if you had to use your blocks the first time, grab them again. We'll be coming into lizard pose on the other side, or sorry, dragon pose on the other side. So the left foot forward to the top of the mat, letting the hips sink down. So in this low lunge, hands can stay on the blocks or come down to the floor. Make sure your left knee is directly over the top of your ankle. Draw the shoulders down and away from the ears. And try to find a point of stillness here. From here, let's make our way to swan on the left side. So you can shift your props out to the sides and toe heel the left foot over to the right side of your mat. Left knee ends up being behind the left wrist and you can put a block underneath your hips or you can just simply fold forward and down.
we'll start to ease out once more, making our way back into our tabletop pose and moving any way that feels good. Maybe stretching out that left leg or doing some hip circles. Okay, so for this next pose, I'm going to give you an option. We're either going to come into saddle or you're going to do supported fish. So I rarely do saddle pose um, on YouTube just because it's really not appropriate for a lot of people. If you have knee injuries or just very sensitive knees or any issues with your low back, probably do supported fish as opposed to saddle. So if you have your bolster, grab it. If you don't have a bolster, just grab two blocks. So saddle pose, you're bringing your heels to the outside and letting your hips sit back down. So if just doing this pose is already aggravating your knees or making them feel uncomfortable, most likely you'll want to do supported fish. And then for the full expression of saddle pose, you wanna align your bolster behind you or you place two blocks behind you and you just let yourself relax over the blocks and the arms can reach out to the sides. So this is option one. Option two for supported fish, you can have your legs straight out in front of you or in a butterfly shape and the upper body is exactly the same. So you're either laying down on your blocks or laying down on your bolster like this. So choosing the version or the pose that you would like to do. So if it's saddle, we want to keep our knees in line with the hip bones, pointing straight forward. And sometimes it can help to kind of roll the flesh of the calves out, keeping the heels facing up and close into the hips. And then from there, you're just lowering your way down. So the bolster is really ideal for a pose like this but you don't need it. You can also just put the block under your head and under the upper back. And the arms can stay exactly as they are. If you'd like to go even further, you can reach your arms up overhead to get a deeper chest opener. And we'll be here for about five to eight minutes.
So if you had your arms up overhead, either from saddle pose or supported fish, just start to draw the hands back down. And we're gonna lift our way back up. So we are going to just come back down to lay flat on our back. So if you're in supported fish, you can just roll to the side. If you're in saddle, you can press into the feet and then prop yourself up with your hand and then the other and move your props. So either the bolster, or the blocks out of the way and we're gonna lower all the way down. And before we go to our next pose, it might feel good to just pull the knees into the belly. And getting into the IT band from here, you're gonna bring your feet flat to the floor. Cross your right ankle over the top of your left knee. Flex this foot and press the right knee away from you. From here, you're gonna drop the right foot down to the left side of the mat. So you're getting your right foot flat down to the floor. If it doesn't quite make it all the way there, you can use a block and put the block underneath your foot to close that gap off. So the left thigh on the floor, the right foot on the mat, and you can reach your right arm out to the side so that both shoulder blades stay grounded. And I like to either hold on to my left ankle or you can even use your left hand to push the right knee away from you. So we want to avoid this right knee collapsing down. We're trying to keep the kneecap pointing straight up to the sky. So you should feel this in your outer right hip.
And keep the figure four shape in your legs. Just lift back up so the sole of your left foot is on the floor. And this time, over cross your right thigh over the left one. So before we do this on the other side, we'll take a laying spinal twist. Arms out to the sides. Your hips might need to move a little to the right before both knees drop down over to the left. And try to keep your right shoulder blade on the floor. If your knees are high off the ground, you can always put a block underneath you if it feels like it's a little too much for your low back.
float the knees back up, uncrossing the legs, both feet flat to the floor. So moving to the IT band stretch. This time you'll be crossing your left ankle over the top of your right knee. Press that left knee away and flex the foot. From here, you're keeping this shape. You're just letting your right thigh drop to the right until your left foot either lowers onto a block or directly to the floor. Left arm reaches out to the side and you can either push your left thigh away using your right hand or you can just catch a hold of your ankle, whatever feels best here. As much as possible, keep your left kneecap pointing straight up so it's not dropping to the floor.
keeping this figure four shape. Let's just lift the right thigh off the ground and then over cross. So the left knee stacks over the right one. Arms reach out to the sides and you might need to move your hips a little to the left. Both knees will drop down to the right. Keep your left shoulder pressing to the floor.
knees will lift back up. And let's make our way into Shavasana, our final resting pose, taking up some space with the arms and the legs, palms facing up to the sky. Let yourself melt into the floor. Feeling the effects of your practice on your joints, on the deep connective tissues. And also checking in to see what has changed emotionally or mentally. How do you feel now as opposed to when you first stepped onto your mat? We do Shavasana at the end of class to give ourselves the opportunity to integrate all the work that we've done. It's like digesting after a big meal. So allow yourself to be still and soft and just let go for a few minutes. Start to breathe a little deeper, waking back up, maybe moving fingers and toes, or you can reach your arms up overhead, take a big stretch, 
lengthening fingers away from the toes. And we'll roll to one side. We can all come back up to take a seat. Sitting up any way that is comfortable. And closing the eyes once more once you're there. Sitting up nice and tall. Chin parallel to the floor. Take a moment here to really be grateful for your practice, thanking yourself for making the time out of your busy day to nurture yourself. And the hands can rest on the knees or join at the heart. We'll chant Om one time, inhaling to chant, breathe in. Om. Namaste. Thank you so much, yogis. I hope you enjoyed this 90 minute yin yoga practice. Please do subscribe to my channel, leave me a comment, let me know what you thought, and I would love to connect with you on Instagram. So the link to my Instagram profile is down below in the description box. If you do my classes regularly, take a photo of yourself doing them. I love to share it in my Instagram stories. It's a great way for me to be able to connect with you guys. Thank you again and have a wonderful day. I'll see you soon.